Hello and welcome to Middleware Friday. My name is Kent Weir and this is episode 3 for January 20th, 2017. In today's episode we're going to talk about Azure Logic Apps and Cognitive Services, the Face API. This will be part 1 of a multi-part series. So in this episode we're going to deal with our feature content which I've just mentioned and we're also going to talk about our community corner where we will share some recent content driven by the community. As part of our feature content today we're going to focus on cognitive services. Now if you recall in episode 2 uh, as part of our community content section I referenced 10 different technologies that developers should be learning. One of those was cognitive services and the Vision API is one of the many APIs that are provided or available inside of the cognitive services platform. So the Vision API is a state-of-the-art image processing algorithm which helps you moderate content automatically and build more personalized app by returning smart insights about faces, images, and emotions. As part of this API, there's several different operations including face detection where we can detect human faces and images using face rectangles and face attributes. We can do face verification by checking to see if two faces belong to the same person or not with a confidence score. We can also provide a similar face search uh, using a query face to find similar looking faces from a collection of faces. We can do face groupings where we can organize faces into face groups based upon their visual similarity. And we can also do face identification where we can search which specific person a query face belongs to based upon user provided person or face data. So here's a, a simple demo that I've created for the purposes of this episode. In this example, we have an electronics store and we have different people that are visiting the electronics store looking at different goods. We also have a camera or a security camera that's able to take pictures of these shoppers and what we can do with that image is actually we can take those images and route them to OneDrive where we will have logic apps consuming the, these pictures from OneDrive. We can then upload them to Blob Storage where we can get a URI that can be passed to the Cognitive Services Face API. There's typically two ways you can go ahead and call the Face API. One is through a streaming approach and the other is by providing a public URI or URL that actually Face API can actually pull from. Now in the context of the current Face API available to Logic Apps, it only supports one mode and that's providing a public URL. And in our example, we're going to go ahead and use Blob Storage to help us out with that. Once we've gone ahead and, and ran that image through the Face API, we're going to get a series of attributes returned back from the Face API and we're going to go ahead and store these in SQL Azure. Now once the data is in SQL Azure we can really do anything we want with it. We could load on top of it different analytics packages including Power BI. For the purpose of this example we will stop at Azure SQL Server. So more and more retailers are trying to get insight into who their customers are in order to provide a more targeted experience for them. So using this approach, we could understand who our customer is, what are some of the goods that they're actually looking at. We could then try to tailor experiences that meet their demographic needs. We could also provide other forms of targeted advertising that may actually drive them to other locations in our store based upon people's typical buying behaviors for their demographic. Before we get started, a prerequisite step is creating a Cognitive Services account. Here I've gone ahead and created a Cognitive Services account. I've specified that my API type is the Face API. It is in preview, so just be aware of that. And then what's happening is I can choose my pricing tier, which there is a free tier, which does give you suitable allocation for demos like this, um, or there's also a paid offering as well if you plan to use this in production. Now inside of Logic Apps, I can go ahead and do a search for face and here's all of the different operations that are available to me. For the purpose of this demo, we're going to focus on face API detect faces, the top one. So let's jump into a demo. So here I've got some images of myself and also Gary Vaynerchuk. He's someone I've been watching and consuming a lot of his content lately. 
just do a YouTube search for Gary V and you'll you'll find his content. So this picture is a picture that was taken last year in London at the Integrate 2016 conference. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this and paste it in my OneDrive folder. We see we can see that the image has has now been synced. Let's go ahead and jump to our Logic app. I'm just going to go ahead and give this a little bit of a kick because it is set to a three minute polling interval. And then let's go ahead and click refresh. We can see that it has successfully run. Let's go ahead and query our SQL server. So this is really my schema. There's way more attributes that are actually captured as part of this image, but for for the purpose of this demo, we're going to focus on a unique ID for that image, gender, age, whether or not a person has a mustache, a beard, sideburns, or is wearing glasses. Let's go ahead and execute that. It's detected that I'm male. It suspects I'm age 41, which might be a little bit uh, a little bit higher. It's indicating I have some element of a beard and some element of sideburns, which uh, that is a value out of one, it currently being 0.2. Okay, so let's go ahead and run another image through. We can see that's now synced. Let's go to our Logic app. We'll give it another kick. currently running and it's complete. Let's go ahead and run that and it is detecting my age is, is 37. So to be fair, to be honest, that image was a couple years old. I'm not going to disclose my exact age, but I will say it is somewhere in between these two numbers. So pretty impressive. Let's now go take a look at the other two images. So let's go ahead and take Gary. Now I, I'm not sure when exactly these images are taken. I do know that Gary is in his early 40s. I believe he's 41 or 42. So it is indicating that Gary is 41.2. I suspect that is, is probably correct. Now it is interesting. Let's take a look, closer look at the image. It is indicating he's got a little bit of a mustache, a bit of a beard, but no sideburns. I'm wondering if that is just, you know, the way the actual image is, you know, the way his face is, is looking towards the camera when the picture was taken. Let's now go ahead and run the last image through. Now in that particular image, it's indicating that he is 45.3 years old. So that would be a little bit older than, than what he actually is. Uh, perhaps it's related to the fact it looks like he hasn't slept, uh, maybe. Uh, it is indicating a mustache, 0. 0.6 out of one, a beard, 0. 0.4 and sideburns. So pretty impressive. Now I'm curious to know, let's actually go ahead and find an image where we have someone that's wearing some sunglasses. Here we have an image of our good friend, Steph Jan Wiggers. He's wearing some sunglasses. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we try to run this picture through the face API. So sure enough, it did pick it up. I'm not going to speak to Steph's age, but it did detect that he is in fact wearing sunglasses. So this is actually pretty cool when you think deep down about this. Like if you were to try to write this logic yourself that went ahead and detected attributes such as gender, age, you know, whether or not someone has facial hair, wearing glasses, it's probably something that would either take you a very long time to do, there probably wouldn't be the return on investment for the amount of time it would take for you to figure all of this stuff out. But as you can see, 
you know, this is something we can wire up relatively easy inside of Azure. So let's take a closer look at that. Here is our, our logic app. And in this case, we are looking for when a new file is created on OneDrive. In this case, it's just the consumer OneDrive. We want to go ahead and create that file inside of our blob storage. And here we're able to retrieve some metadata about the file. So we can include the file name, we can include the file content. Next, we're going to go ahead and call the Detect Faces API. Now recall earlier in this video, I talked there's two modes when you call this API. If you're calling it within code, you have the ability to provide an image URL as a parameter, or you can actually stream the raw data to the service itself. That won't work, um, at least not in this version of the API. So we're going to go ahead and use an image URL. And that's really why we're getting a copy of the file from OneDrive. We're going to then put it into a blob. And this is really a public endpoint. So, you know, maybe not be the most ideal scenario, certainly not for production. But for the purpose of this demo, uh, we're just using a, a public URL for it. Now, with the API, the Detect Faces API, it can actually return multiple faces. So if you had multiple faces inside of an image, it could actually go ahead and return the data for all of those images for you. That's going to automatically implement a for each as soon as we go ahead and try to um, add another connector. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and insert a row into SQL Azure. The table itself is, is called demographics, not that that's important. And then I can go ahead and use the data that's actually returned from our cognitive services API. So we've got things like a, a unique face ID, we've got gender, age, mustache, beard, sideburns, and glasses. And that's it. So you, th you think about the power of cognitive services and how you can actually leverage this type of artificial intelligence and machine learning in your applications in a matter of a few minutes is, is mind blowing for me. Like this is truly game changing and allows us to build applications that would have been cost prohibitive just a few years ago. I hope you enjoyed that demo. I will be building upon it in future weeks. But if that wasn't enough for you, let's take a look at how Uber is using this Microsoft technology to increase the safety for their passengers. <laughs>
let's now jump into the community content portion of this episode. First item I want to discuss is the upcoming Global Integration Bootcamp put on by the community. You can access this webpage at globalintegrationbootcamp.com. The date for this international event is Saturday, March 25th, 2017. The focus of the bootcamp is really around Microsoft integration technology. So we've got BizTalk 2016, Logic App, Service Bus, Enterprise Integration Pack, Microsoft Flow, Hybrid Integration, on-premise gateway, API management. There's many locations that have been identified throughout the world. I think a lot of the details are still being flushed out, but for example, the fellows in Australia have got things sorted out. So there's an event planned for Perth and Brisbane. I think there's potentially some other locations being looked at as well. The event itself is put on by all volunteers. So Sven, Stepjan, Tommaso, Glenn, Eldert, Heiss, and Martin Abbott, well, in addition to Rob Fox. So these are all volunteers, all well-known members of the community, volunteering their time and trying to put on a good show. I do know that many of the organizers have been collaborating behind the scenes to ensure that top-notch content is being shared across the board. I know in many locations, they're also planning on some hands-on labs, so watch out for that as well. So that's the news about the Global Integration Bootcamp. The planning actually goes back all the way back to September 2016 when Microsoft and more specifically Mandy hosted the Charlotte Bootcamp. At that point, some of the international community members were wondering why the bootcamp wasn't going to be held elsewhere. And that provided a catalyst to actually get together and model the Global Integration Bootcamp after the Azure Bootcamp. So next, let's talk about a post by Steph Jan Wiggers, friend of the show fellow MVP, he's talking about Azure Service Bus and BizTalk 2016 for messaging between enterprises. I thought this would be a good complimentary blog post to go through based upon episode two, where we talked about the Azure Logic Apps and Peak Lock functionality. So in this blog post, Steph Jan walks through some common connectivity scenarios when connecting to Azure Service Bus. So in this particular example, he's got different enterprises that may be running Microsoft BizTalk Server on-premise and how they can interface directly with Service Bus topics through subscriptions, or in some cases, they may be going through uh, different inbound queues, having a Logic Apps forwarding those message messages and putting it into the outbound queue. So you can mix and match based upon kind of your use case. I think what's interesting about the post is he goes through some of the different connectivity options. So here's an example of BizTalk and the SB messaging adapter and how you would go ahead and configure it to talk to an inbound queue. Uh, he also describes some of the different policies that are created that would restrict users or consumers to have the right level of access. You don't want a consumer to be having more permissions than required. If you're a publisher, similarly, you're going to want, you know, the ability to publish messages, but not consume or manage uh, unless absolutely necessary. Next, he goes on to talk about the peak lock pattern, which we did talk about in Middleware Friday, episode two. Here, he just goes ahead and creates an inbound queue. He's going to then complete that message when it's, when it's done and then he's able to send the message outbound. So he's really has this logic app sitting in between two queues. Lastly, he talks about some of the service bus messaging tiers that are available. So we've got basic, which is, is it extremely cheap? And you've got standard, which is still ridiculously cheap for what it does. And then lastly, we've got premium, where you want more predictability around your service bus tenant, you also have a larger message size, which equates to around one meg. There are some, some challenges if you're dealing with a 256 KB message size, but really the service bus team has done it that way in order to provide more predictable performance, that noisy neighbor situation where you've got one tenant that is consuming up more resources than they should. But if you truly want dedicated capacity, premium is, is an option 
and relative to some other messaging platforms, it's, it's still a good deal. Lastly, worth highlighting is some of the capabilities around BizTalk360, one of the sponsors of this show, and their new tool, Service Bus 360, which provides the ability to manage and monitor your service bus queues and topics. So that concludes episode three. Uh, here's the opportunity to provide some feedback. I've gotten some great feedback so far. Happy to get some more. Please let me know what you'd like to see on the show. Are there specific technologies, specific people you'd like to see get involved? I'd like to thank BizTalk360 and the team there for supporting this vlog. Happy to have them on board. And they've been a great partner of the show. Lastly, I'll leave you with some music credits from SoundCloud. So thanks for watching the show and take care.